Now, talking about resolution, I just want to point something out to you about another case that I've covered, which is not uh, a missing person, is somebody who was found murdered. And we did, uh, I did an unsolved case uh, video about Lindsay Reimer not long ago. And I just want to share this with you because uh, it's been, they're, they're having a community gathering this Saturday, the 26th of October, at 1.30 p.m., uh, Lindsay's family are asking people to come down to Calder Homes Park in Hebden uh, Bridge to remember Lindsay Reimer. Now, Lindsay was only 13 years old and she went out to buy a box of cornflakes um, in the evening, a bit late in the evening, around about 10 p.m., <clears throat> bumped into went into a, a pub where a mum was with a friend and a mum offered to buy her a coke she refused declined to have the coke off she went bought her cornflakes was seen on cctv buying the cornflakes and then disappeared into thin air so this then she was found about i think it's about six months later maybe not as long a, a later as that um, and she had been murdered and weighted down in a, a, another river. You know, gosh, no, rivers are just, I, I can't think of rivers without thinking about missing people or murdered people. So, yeah, this is what her family say. This Saturday, 26th of October at 1.30, we're asking people to come down to Calder Homes Park in Hebden Bridge to remember Lindsay Reimer. We're asking residents of Hebden Bridge, uh, My Thomroyd, Todd Morden, and surrounding areas, and anyone, wherever you are, who was affected by a disappearance, murder, and police investigation. This is to show how crimes of this nature affect not just the immediate family but ripple out to the wider community so nobody has been held accountable for lindsay's death over the years two people have been arrested but they were not charged and we don't know who those people were because of course the police can't release that information it's still an ongoing investigation as far as the police are concerned uh, so the family say we want to capture a visual representation of this ripple effect and we'll have the help of Kane Clemens and his drone who will be zooming out from an image of Zip Lindsay to show family and the wider community. We would like to get an idea of how many people will attend. So if you're able to come along, pre please press the going button. Thanks again for your support and hope to see you in the park on the 26th of October. Lindsay's family. Oh, it, does, it just makes me cry that. So she was 13 years old. And yeah, just recently, about a week ago, I did a, um, a video about Lindsay. Did, uh, Lindsay. Lindsay, um, and you know, her family don't have any answers. Her family still don't have any answers. Who murdered her? 13 year old girl bought a packet of cornflakes and then just disappeared into thin air. So, if you're in that area, maybe you'd be able to go. Um, obviously, I can't go, I'm I would go if I was uh, more local, I would definitely go. Uh, I think these things are important to keep these case. These cases can be solved even at this late stage, um, you know, because I think it was 20 years ago, was it, that this happened? They don't put the date on it, actually. I can't remember the date of when it happened, but I think it was 20. Oh, yeah, there you go, 1994. So, yeah, exactly 20 years. So that's probably why they're doing this. Um yeah, what happened to Lindsay Reimer, 13-year-old girl? Somebody knows. Somebody knows exactly what happened to her. Somebody did it. Somebody out there walking around who's got the information or, or is the actual person who did it. Um, you know, search your conscience. Yeah. 
Yeah, justice for Lindsay. Hi, Jim. <clears throat> Sorry, just having a look down the chat. Okay, so, um, gosh, I, do you know, I was, I, I've, I want to do an update on the Delphi uh, crimes as well in uh, that's going on in America, but I'm not doing that now. It's just overlooked. Too much tragedy. I mean, that's an awful case, isn't it? I've got an update for you on the Jay Slater case. If you pick up, I personally don't think there's any foul play in the Jay Slater case, as you know. Uh, but I have got a little bit of an update to talk about, but not now. Tomorrow, manana. Tomorrow is another day, isn't it? And we're lucky if we've got tomorrow, aren't we? You know, because actually, you know, it's ironic, isn't it? Because uh, let's just go back to a bit. Because uh, Lindsay, she would have wanted to live, isn't it? It's, it? When you think about life, is so ironic. So many people out there who want to live. And then they get their life taken away from them, stolen. Like Lindsay Reimer, her future stolen, a 13-year-old girl. And somebody, some twonk, is wandering around free, knowing what they did to Lindsay. Um, and they're free, you know. But Lindsay wanted to live. And then, of course, you do get other people, they don't want to live. You know, they choose to, you know, it's their right to take their life if they want to. You know, nobody can tell somebody else what to do. What to do. It always sort of intrigues me about my ex-partner because he um, had cancer and he was given six months to live at one point in his life. And, um, you know, he survived that. Survived that and then later on, deleted himself you know because but that's what he wanted you know i think we do have to remember that although it is very sad of course when anyone you know feels that they're at a point where that's the only option left to them it's very very sad but it is a choice that people make it is a choice and uh, my ex-partner he made that choice you know uh, even though he'd survived cancer and then there's lots of other people out there who've got cancer or got other illnesses and they <clears throat> they can't live. You know, they want to live and they can't. It's, it's strange life, isn't it, really, when you think about it? You know, because, uh, you know, lots of people choose to take their life and then other people want desperately to live but they can't for whatever reason, either because their life is taken away from them like Lindsay Reimer, or, you know, they get an illness or something happens or they get an accident or, you know, it's like um, you just never know. What I'm trying to say, I think, is you, you really do if you have to appreciate every minute. And I really believe that if you're still here and you're still alive, your mission on earth is not finished yet. Whatever your mission is, you know, that is what I believe. And I'm going to say something this is something that I've always thought, and you probably think, oh, God, what's she whittling on about now? But I always think, like, what if life was like a PlayStation game? So, you know, because I used to play a lot of PlayStation games with my son when he was young. Uh, and, you know, like, you've got so many lives. And if you get to a point, there was a Bugs Bunny game that we used to play. It's brilliant. You had to find these golden carrots. I used to love it. And uh, I, I, I say I used to love it. It was my son's game, but I'd be like, "Give me that," you know, and uh, playing on it. And you'd get to a point sometimes on it where you'd gone the wrong way or you'd done the wrong thing. So I used to sort of throw, you know, you'd throw your character off a mountain so that you could go back to the start, start again. And you know, it always struck me that what life's a bit like that, isn't it? What if I, my own personal belief is? Whatever you're on this earth for, you, we don't know, but you're on this earth for a reason. 
uh, and you know you, you you know maybe you don't know what that is but you just have to keep putting one foot in front of the other i think and i uh, and if you throw yourself off the mountain like with the playstation games i think you have to go back to the beginning and start again i honestly do i think if you choose that in your life that oh i've had enough of this i'm not doing this i think you just get thrown back again <laughs> to do it again because you haven't done what you're supposed to be doing that's my that's something that's occurred to me it might be true so uh i'm not saying it is i'm just saying so i don't and I'm, what, I'm not saying that you get thrown back to do it again you get a different set of circumstances you get exactly the same set of circumstances um you know because for whatever reason that's your mission that's your reason you you know the ripples that you send out in your life you know sometimes i think that when i'm in class i've taught so many people spanish but you know thousands of people over the years really all the years that i've been teaching spanish and they come into my classroom and quite often they end up telling me their life story um and you know if you read my confessions of a spanish teacher book you'll see when i used to go around and teach in people's houses it was even worse you know you'd get like there's just something about me that people uh like to tell me their life story and it's and i'm not complaining about it. it's good I, I like the fact that people can trust me but i must have had an, a a, a because lots of times when i've tried not to be in spain maybe to go somewhere else or to go back to the uk and it just hasn't worked out sometimes your life is you are on a certain path god i've gone off philosophical i didn't mean to do this but in my belief this is my belief you are on a certain path you are here for a reason you don't know what it is but you just have to keep plugging on as best you can how many times you fall over you have to get back up again and just do it again and try and do good some good for other people you know because uh, you might you might you don't know how even just a little word that you might say to someone or a little conversation you might have with someone might have an effect on their life you know uh, a positive effect just we're all just part of this chain and there's all ripples going out all the time and it, you know I, I don't believe that when you die that life is over i don't believe that i think you do go on to different planes and different you know uh, things i've got a very strong belief in that but it's only a belief i don't know for sure i don't know i'll find out one day i suppose um and you know it's hopefully we'll find out one day um how can i explain so yeah so to me it's like there's no point in throwing myself off that mountain and then having to go back and start it all again you know i'm just going through this journey we're all on a journey and all of us here that are just even brushing uh you know brushing shoulders a little bit on the internet or whatever um there's a reason for that we're all taking something out you know some people might be taking out of it oh god she's a right idiot i'm you know don't believe anything she says or other people will be listening and saying oh yeah you know that that resonates with me or whatever you know we're all part of this we're all here on this crazy planet whether we want to be here or not we're here and we're here for a reason and unfortunately victoria couldn't cope or maybe if that's what happened you know, i've got to be careful because i don't know exactly what happened um and uh maybe she'll have to come back and do it all again you know maybe do it uh that's just something that's good to me but uh do you have to come back and do it all again if you can't make it the first time okay so i'm going to stop waffling on now uh, i'm going to see you real soon in the next video i'm going to play some um i'm going to show some photos of victoria i'm going to play some nice music and uh you know we're all in it together we're all in this together nobody doesn't matter how much money you've got i mean look at liam payne i was thinking about that you know that guy you know you look at liam he's you know he's, uh, apparently he had a lot of money you know so it's not a money thing but 
he, he couldn't beat his demons, could he? He couldn't beat his demons. It's so very, very sad. Um, doesn't matter how much money you've got. Mental health, in fact, can be made, I think mental health can be worse, made worse because when people take drugs or drink alcohol, the more money you've got, the more drugs you can take, the more expensive drugs you can take, the more alcohol you can drink, the more sort of predicaments you can get yourself into, you know. So it's some people are just happy with their lot, aren't they? Some it's, it's, it is an inward thing because some people are just happy with, you know, getting up in the morning, going to work, having food on the table, their kids, their dogs, their cats. You know, some people are just happy with a simple life. And other people, they're never happy. You know, doesn't matter what happens. You know, they want to be famous. They get famous. Oh, they're still not happy. They want to be rich. They get rich. Oh, they're still not happy. You know, some people just won't ever be happy because of the internal things that are going on with their mental health. I don't think, uh, you know, money makes things easier. Of course it does. But um, I don't think it makes people happy anyway. Hi, Laurie. Night all. Yeah, everyone's like, oh, God, we're going now. Shut her up before she keeps going on. Okay, so, yes, if you've got problems, you put them in a black bag and throw it behind you. That's uh, if, uh, visually, like, uh, you know, mentally, not really. No, don't put your husband in a black bag and throw him behind you. I mean, in, in like a figurative way, imagine... You know, if you're having problems with your husband, put him in a black bag and throw him behind you, like uh, a vision. <laughs> Not really, though. Okay, I'm going, I'm 